Hey there, everyone. Time for some CGI news. Okay, so I'm just going to go over some of the occurrences, news that I thought, you know, if you're uh, any kind of 3D or, or CGI artist, you might want to know about. So the first news uh, I saw on the Blender website is Mock Studio Pro is, I guess, temporarily available here as a free download. Now, if you don't know what this is, I heard about this uh, about a year or so ago, and... Um, I didn't know when the product was coming out, but basically Mock Studio Pro is in fact like a, a virtual rendering environment where basically you, you drop in your characters and, and start adding your uh, materials and whatnot, and everything is rendered in real time or pretty close to it. So basically, you start moving the camera around, you'll see all these shadows and reflections and all that kind of stuff in real time. Uh, so it's obviously, it's definitely worth checking out. Usually it comes... When I've looked in the past, it looked like it was a, you know, for sale. It was bundled with an extremely expensive graphics card. Uh, I don't know why they're giving it away for free right now, or you know how long it's going to be like that. You might want to just go ahead and download it and, and try to install it and whatnot and see how it goes. Uh, the thing is, I tried to install it on my Windows system. It's only Windows. That's one thing. Okay, so here we go. Operating system you need, for example, you need at least Windows 7 or Vista. That's one thing a lot of people, you know, are, are still on XP, for example. And, um, you know, this is not too bad, Intel Pentium 4, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, 2 gigs of hard drive space. Um, but this thing here, I, I did not have a 1 gig uh, graphics card at the time. So I was not able to actually get this to run on my system. I have a 512 meg graphics card. So we'll see what happens if I can get a better graphics card. Uh, go, to their, go here to their website. Download it. There's a readme file in there. It will tell you the different cards that you should get. You might need a pretty beefy computer to get this to run. If you can, though, it may be awesome because then, you know, basically no more rendering. Just look through this. The product showcase, there's some really awesome stuff in here. Hopefully, it'll, it'll get to run. Okay, that, that's one thing. Um, next thing is, uh, I'll go here to the Apple App Store. If you're a, if you're a Mac person, then you probably want to know that uh, the new version of Final Cut, Final Cut Pro, has been released. And the big three here, Final Cut Pro Motion, there's Final Cut Pro, and Motion, which is basically Apple's version of After Effects. And then Compressor, which is basically Apple's version of, of Squeeze. If you've already Squeeze, it's basically something that allows you to in fact, it allows you to, uh, you know, compress your video to different uh, file formats. Okay, so um, uh, Final Cut Pro has been getting very mixed opinions from people. The, the biggest news for us, you know, if you have not used Final Cut or anything before, or if you, you've been scared away by the price, is that the price is only $2.99, and uh, so far it's been fantastic for me. Uh, Motion which I had not been able to purchase at home before because it was part of the suite. It was just, you know, way too expensive at the time. I had it at work but not at home. Uh, it's only 50 bucks, and as far as I can tell, it's the exact same version that I have at work. Uh, it, it looks like it has everything that the other version has. I mean, it's, it's actually more of an updated version. It has better stuff than, than the stuff I have at work. So if you're a Mac person, you probably want to get this stuff. It's really good. Okay, the final thing is, as you know, I do a lot of Blender stuff. Blender 2.58 is released. If you go to the website and download it, which you obviously should, you can go here. There's there's a uh, uh, update log that shows you all the updates. Most of it, if you go through this, it's masses of bug fixes, which obviously those are really neat. Um, there wasn't too much new stuff I saw as far as new things. There's The only thing I saw that was neat off the bat was this warp modifier. Let me show you how to do that. Shift A, and I'll add a sphere just to have something. And then I'll Shift A, and I'll add an empty. Put it over here. I'll put my cursor over here, and I'll hit Shift A, and I'll add another empty. Now I'll select the ball by right clicking on it. I'll go over here to Modifiers, and I'll add my warp. And then you'll see there's a from, and there's a to. And it has the little box, which means that they want you to select an object. So I'll select the first empty, and then I'll select the second empty. And now you'll see that what it does is, as I move these empty objects around, you'll see that the sections of the object 
are actually moving towards those um, those empty uh, empty objects there. So basically, the uh, from object states the place where you want the deformation for the warp effect to start happening. So if I move this back, you'll see that, in fact, it determines where the uh, deformation is going to start happening at. All right, and there's a bit of a fall off and whatnot. And then the two object is pretty self-explanatory. The section of the object will try and stretch towards this object here. So obviously you can see here, I, just with these two objects in about just a few seconds here, I've been able to deform this object in, in a, a manner of interesting ways. So, pretty interesting stuff. Hopefully you'll get some use out of it, and I hope you get to check out the programs that I mentioned.